the hour of convening having arrived, all members of the House will please report to the floor and take seats. All members of the House will report to the floor. The clerk will ring the bell. All members of the House will please report to the floor. We are going to have the morning roll call. All members present will please vote green to signify their presence in the chamber and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members now voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. Doorkeepers will please close the doors and keep them closed. Well, good morning. We will begin our day with scripture reading and prayer by the chaplain, <clears throat> after which we will pledge allegiance to the flag of our country. Our chaplain this morning will be introduced by the gentleman from the 34th House District, Representative Burt Reeves. Representative Reeves. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. You know, in six years, this is my first pastor of the day, and, and I realize how special this is. And um, very special for me here today, um, Jeremy Abernathy um, is a great friend of mine. I want to introduce his beautiful family, his wife, Tiffany. Y'all stand up and his three daughters, Havel and Kendall and Emery, and they've all uh, cut class from Mount Perrin Christian School today to come down here. <laughs> Beautiful family. And his, um, Jeremy's mom and dad are up in the gallery up here. Uh, Bishop Larry Abernathy and Gret uh, Gretchen Abernathy up here. Thank you all for being here. <laughs> Jeremy, uh, Grew up partially in Cobb County, went to McEachern High School, Morehouse, then he went to law school at Loyola, and then got his master's in religion at Liberty University, and he is actually um, bivocational, which I think this is the third pastor lawyer we've had this session. Um, so he has he's been the senior pastor of a church in um, Marietta, Noonday Missionary Baptist Church for the last seven years. And um, he is also an accomplished and esteemed attorney in Marietta. And, and um, he and I go way back um, from practicing law there. He is the founding member of Abernathy, Ditzel, Hendrick, and Bryce, specializing in, in a lot of family law, does a lot of work in juvenile court and probate court as well. Um, he has been named uh, the Cobb County Rising Star under 40, Georgia Trend Magazine, Legal Elite, He's been a super, law, super lawyer rising star for several years, and I can tell you his reputation um, is incredible. And I, I share real quick before he gets up here a story. Um, you know, this is, I share this because I think, I think we can all relate to this. Um, Jeremy and I, we've known each other for years, and we had a case together. Um, we were on opposite sides of a case in the last year, about six months ago, right? 
And, um, you know, and sometimes a lot, sometimes cases are easy and sometimes we go to battle and, and that is, that's how it goes. I think we understand that in this room. And we each had clients and they had very different positions uh, where we were in the case, but both believed that where they were coming from was the right place. And so we had a, a couple of knockdown drag out hearings. I think I got to cross examine your client for about two hours. That was fun. He cross examined mine too. But um, but in the end, the judge um, made the decision and kind of split the difference. And I would say that we we all walked out a little bit happy and a little bit not happy. And that's oftentimes what happens. But what's important is when we walked out, we shook hands laughed about it and, and, and said we'll be, we'll be reminding ourselves of this case for years to come because that's what professionals do. And I tell that story because I think that that's the experience that a lot of us in this room have had in what we do here. But folks, please welcome my good friend, uh, Pastor Jeremy Abernathy. Good morning. Thank you, Speaker Ralston and Representative Rees for extending this opportunity to provide remarks and also pray today. Uh, this is certainly one of my proudest moments as a Georgian and I am truly honored for this uh, esteemed privilege to present before this great body today. I would also like to thank my lovely wife, Tiffany, and my three beautiful daughters, Haviland, Kendall, and Emery Grace. And I also want to thank my mother and father, and it's my father's birthday today. So happy birthday, Dad. <clears throat> I am a proud resident of the state of Georgia, but I spent my childhood in New Orleans, Louisiana. Today, the city of New Orleans celebrates Mardi Gras, or Fat Tuesday. Parades fill the city streets. Brilliant brass instruments will serenade the crowds. Thundering bass drums will keep the beat and onlookers dancing from morning through midnight. Also, the horses, the stars of the show, will likewise be dancing. The cowboys, Horsemanship will be on display. The tractor smoke will fill the air as they tug these large, fancy floats. These large, fancy floats are filled with riders who will be throwing plastic spears, beads, as many of you all have here today, coconuts, candy, and toys to the crowd who yells, throw me something, mister. In my childhood, I recalled yelling to the very top of my lungs. But I would always be disappointed because I was short in stature. I would reach my hands up and yell to the top of my lungs, but invariably there would be those that were much taller that would jump in and grab what was thrown right before I could clutch it in my hands. But I had an ally. My ally was my grandfather, Edward Lee, who went on to be with the Lord. But I recall many instances when I was a young boy where my grandfather would gather me along with all of my other cousins. He would pile us up in his truck. He would go to that spot that he went every year on the corner of Loyola and Claiborne. And there in that favorite spot, he would lift me up on his shoulders so that I was now able to grab all of the wonderful throws that were thrown off of these floats. My grandfather was my hero. He was a veteran. He was a deacon at his church. Second Baptist in New Orleans, Louisiana, for 60 plus years. He was faithfully married to my grandmother, Lucille, for over 60 years as well. He was a father of seven. 
He tirelessly worked each and every day, sun up, sun down, putting meals on the table to feed his children each and every day. And he allowed me to sit on his shoulders. He was not just allowing me to sit on his shoulders, literally at Mardi Gras, but figuratively, in every sense of the word, I today am still sitting on his shoulders. I'm sitting on his wonderful example of loving God, loving his family, and serving his country well. Today, I would ask that we all take a moment to think and reflect on all of those whose shoulders that we have had the opportunity to sit upon. Think of parents, think of friends, think of the community that has lifted us up and allowed us to be on their shoulders so that we can get the very best. Also, as we think about the shoulders of those that graciously allowed us to sit upon, we also must never forget the shoulders of our Savior. I love what the Apostle Paul tells us. He encourages us as follows. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. We may think, I have too many of my own personal burdens that I'm consumed with that I'm trying to shoulder myself. But I encourage us this morning to not just think about others' shoulders, but also to think about our heavenly Savior. I want us to think about Isaiah the prophet and what he wrote in the ninth chapter, sixth verse. For unto us a child is born, born unto us a son, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. We thank God for the strong shoulders of our Savior and saints. If you would all please stand and join me in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your enduring love. We thank you, Lord, for this very day that you have made. We thank you, Lord, for this great body of leaders that you have allowed to assemble here. We thank you in advance for the hard work that they do. We thank you for their sacrifice. We thank you for all of your blessings that you bestow upon us. We thank you, Lord, also for the shoulders of those that have preceded us, the shoulders of sacrifice upon which we stand today. We love you, we praise you, and we honor you. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you. Doorkeepers will unlock the doors.
The chair recognizes Chairman Hogan, the chair of the Committee on Information and Audits. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Information and Audits read the proceedings of the previous legislative day and found them to be correct. Chairman Hogan, the chair of the Committee on Information and Audits, reports that the journal of the previous legislative day has been read and found to be correct. Is there any objection to the confirmation of the journal? The chair hears none and the journal is confirmed. The clerk will read the resolution establishing the order of business for the day. Mr. Burns, the 159th moves following me establishes the order of business in the first part of the period unanimous consents. Introduction of bills and resolutions. First reading and reference of House bills and resolutions. Second reading of bills and resolutions. Reports of standing committees. Third reading and passage of uncontested local bills and resolutions. First reading and reference of Senate bills and resolutions. Morning orders. Is there any objection to the adoption of the resolution establishing the order of business for the day? The chair hears none and the resolution is adopted. First reading of bills and resolutions, the clerk will read. House Bill 997 by Representative Carpenter, the 4th Cantrell of the 22nd, Friday the 118th, in Bonner of the 72nd. Bill be titled an act to amend Title 20, the official code of Georgia annotator relating to education. Higher education. House Bill 998 by Representative Rhodes, the 120th, Buckner of the 137th, Corbett of the 174th, McCall of the 33rd, Tarvin of the 2nd. Bill be titled an act to amend Title 27 of the official code of Georgia annotator relating to game and fish. Game, fish, and parks. House Bill 999 by Representative Knight of the 130th, McCall of the 33rd, and Burns of the 159th. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 4 of Title 1 of the official code of Georgia annotator relating to state holidays. Agriculture and Consumer Affairs. House Bill 1000 by Representative Benton of the 31st England of the 116th and Bar of the 103rd. Bill be titled an act to authorize the governing authority of the town of Brazelton to levy an excise tax. Intragovernmental Coordination. House Bill 1001 by Representative Stovall of the 74th, Cantrell of the 22nd, Bernal of the 77th, and Scott of the 76th. Bill be titled an act to amend Code Section 22. 324.2 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to video monitoring. Education. House Bill 1002 by Resident Harrell of the 106th. Bill be titled an act to amend Article 2 of Chapter 7, Title 4080 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to the imposition rate computation of and exemptions from income taxes. Ways and Means. House Bill 1003 by Resident Burns, 159th, Tackersley, the 160th, Hitchens, the 161st, and Parrish, the 159th. Bill be titled Act to Amend Code Section 1562 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotator relating the number of judges of Superior Courts. Judiciary. House Bill 1004 by President Stevens, the 164th. Bill be titled Act to Amend Article 2, Chapter 7 of Title 48 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotator relating the imposition rate and computation exemptions regarding income taxes. Ways and Means. House Bill 1005 by President Dickey, the 140th, Holmes, the 129th, Washburn, and the 141st. They'll be taught an act to authorize the governing authority of the city of Forsyth to levy an excise tax. Intragovernmental coordination. House Bill 1006 by Representative Jackson, the 64th Dryer, the 59th, Bodie, the 62nd, Schofield of the 60th, and Bruce, the 61st. They'll be taught an act to provide for the selection of Chief Judge of the Atlanta Judicial Circuit. Judiciary. House Bill 1007 by Representative Douglas, the 7th, Bodie, the 62nd, Carpenter, the 4th, Perkle, the 155th, Fry, the 118th, and others. Bill be entitled an act to, to amend Title 31 of the official code of Georgia annotator relating to health. Health and Human Services. House Bill 1008 by Representative Campbell, 171st, McCall, 33rd, Corbett of the 174th, Berkeley, the 155th, Rose, 120th, and others. Bill be entitled an act to amend Code Section 82111 of the official code of Georgia annotator relating to definitions relative to factory built buildings. Agriculture and Consumer Affairs. House Bill 1009 by Representative Smith of the 41st, Carpenter of the 4th, Wilkinson of the 38th, and Taylor of the 173rd. They'll be titled an act to amend Part 2A of Article 13 of Chapter 6 of Title 40, the official code of Georgia annotator relating to personal assistive mobility devices. Motor Vehicles. House Bill 1010 by Representative Schofield of the 60th, Clark of the 108th, Carter of the 92nd, Hughley of the 136th, Hobson of the 153rd, and others. Bill be entitled an act to amend Code Section 
201 of the official code of Georgia annotated article 1 of chapter 1 of title 20 the official code of Georgia annotated in chapter 1 of title 34 judiciary house bill 1011 by representative Fry of the 118th Harold of the 106 Smyrie 135th Hutchinson the 107th and Wilson in the 80th and others will be taught on act to amend code section 12 3 58 the official code of Georgia annotated relating to powers and duties Natural Resources and Environment. House Resolution 1246 by Representative Mitchell, the 88th Resolution urging the legislative and elected officials. Special Rules. House Resolution 1247 by Representative Stevens, the 164th a Resolution designating the Savannah Logistics Technology Innovation Corridor. Economic Development and Tourism. House Resolution 1248 mm -hmm. by Resident Clark of the 108, Thomas the 56, Hutchinson the 107th, Hughley of the 136, Bennett the 94th, and others. A resolution creating the House Study Committee on Infant and Maternal Mortality. Health and Human Services. House Resolution 1249 by Resident Kausch of the 50th, Robichaux of the 48th, Holland of the 54th, Clark of the 108th, Moore of the 95th, and others. A resolution creating the House Study Committee on Increasing Access to Pre-K. Education. House Resolution 1250 by Representative Schofield, the 60th, Dreyer, the 59th. Resolution urging the Georgia Department of Transportation direct sound barriers. Transportation. House Resolution 1251 by Representative Tanner, the 9th, Powell, the 32nd, Tarvin, the 2nd, Montahan, the 17th, and Ridley, the 6th. A resolution urging the Congress of the United States to propose an amendment to the Constitution of the United States. Governmental Affairs. Unnumbered House Bill by Representative Workheiser of the 157th and Herald of the 106th to be entitled an act to amend code section 487 40.26 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to the Georgia Entertainment Industry Investment Act. Ways and Means. Senate Bill 123 by Senator Ligon of the 3rd, Watson of the 1st, Kirk of the 13th, Oric of the 36th, Jones of the 25th, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 8 of Title 12 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to waste management. Natural Resources and Environment. Senate Bill 302 by Senator mm -hmm. Albers of the 56th, Hofstetler of the 52nd, Dugan of the 30th, Miller of the 49th, Kennedy of the 18th, and others. A bill be entitled an act to amend Article 3, Chapter 5 of Title 28 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to fiscal bills generally. Appropriations. Senate Bill 310 by Senator Harper of the 7th, Gooch of the 51st, Martin of the 9th, Huffstetler of the 52nd. Bill being titled an act to amend Title 43, the official code of Georgia and Senator relating to professions and businesses. Regulated industries. Senate Bill 319 by Senator Ginn of the 47th, Huffstetler of the 52nd, Mullis of the 53rd, Tippins of the 37th, Harper of the 7th, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Part 3 of Article 5 of Chapter 5 of Title 12 of the official code of Georgia and Senator relating to rivers and river basins. Natural Resources and Environment. Senate Bill 341 by Senator Robertson of the 29th, Dugan of the 30th, Miller of the 49th, Gooch of the 51st, and Kenny of the 18th. Bill be titled an act to amend Chapter 8 of Title 35, the official code of Georgia and Tater relating to employment and training of peace officers. Public Safety and Homeland Security. Senate Bill 359 by Senator Huffstetler of the 52nd, Tillery of the 19th, Strickland of the 17th, Albers of the 56th, and Kirkpatrick of the 32nd and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Title 33, the official code of Georgia annotated relating to insurance. Special Committee on Access to Quality Health Care. That completes first readers. Second reading of bills and resolutions. The clerk will read. House Bill 987 by Representative Cooper of the 43rd, La Hood of the 175th, Jones of the 47th, Petrie of the 166th, and Efstration of the 104th and others. A bill relating to health. House Bill 988 by Representative Bentley of the 139th, the bill to amend an act to create Board of Elections and Registration for Macon County. House Bill 989 by Representative Park of the 101st, Holland of the 54th, Hutchinson of the 107th, Moore of the 95th, Kalsh of the 50th, and others. A bill relating to therapy services for children with disabilities, House Bill 990 by Representative Meeks of the 178th and Workheiser of the 157th, a bill to amend an act to provide a new charter for the city of Screven. 
House Bill 991 by Representative Hatchet of the 150th, Knight of the 130th, England of the 116th, Stevens of the 164th, Parish of the 158th, and others. A bill relating to health. House Bill 992 by Representative Scott of the 76th, Kendrick of the 93rd, Thomas of the 39th, Thomas of the 56th, Jackson of the 64th. A bill relating to income taxes. House Bill 993 by Representative Dempsey of the 13th, Welch of the 110th, Oliver of the 82nd, Cantrell of the 22nd, England of the 116th. A bill relating to vital records. House Bill 994 by Representative Reeves of the 34th, Fleming of the 121st, Estration of the 104th, Welch of the 110th, Earhart of the 36th, a bill to revise provisions to advance the enforcement of laws and responses to certain criminal activities. House Bill 995 by Representative Bonner of the 72nd, Earhart of the 36th, Barr of the 103rd, Carpenter of the 4th, Montana of the 17th, and others, a bill relating to education. House Bill 996 by Representative Cooper of the 43rd, Gaines of the 117th, Silcox of the 52nd, Hatch of the 150th, Newton of the 123rd, a bill relating to definitions relative to the Georgia Cosmetic Laser Services Act. House Resolution 1237 by Representative Knight of the 130th, Rhodes of the 120th, Buckner of the 137th, Dominic of the 29th, Smith of the 70th, and others. Resolution urging the Congress of the United States to pass the Recovering America's Wildlife Act. House Resolution 1238 by Representative Tankersley of the 160th, Stevens of the 164th, Petrie of the 166th. Resolution recognizing Mrs. Blondine Newman dedicating a road in her honor. House Resolution 1239 by Representative Gaines of the 117th, Widower of the 119th, Powell of the 32nd, Martin of the 49th, England of the 116th, and others. Resolution honoring the life of Mr. Dan McGill and dedicating an intersection in his memory. House Resolution 1240 by Representative Cantrell of the 22nd, Burns of the 159th, Trammell of the 132nd, Gravely of the 67th, Caldwell of the 20th, and others. Resolution urging the federal government to allow states to switch to permanent daylight saving time. Senate Bill 315 by Senator Tippins of the 37th, Duggan of the 30th, Cowsert of the 46th, Stone of the 23rd, Ligon Jr. of the 3rd, and others, a bill relating to mechanics and materialmen. Senate Bill 322 by Senator Gannon of the 47th, Miller of the 49th, Oroch of the 36th, Williams of the 39th, Tate of the 38th, and others, a bill relating to development impact fees. Three second readers.
Reports of standing committees. The clerk will read. Representative Jan Tankersley, the 160th District Chairman of the Committee on Intergovernmental Coordination Local, submitted the following report. The Speaker Committee on Intergovernmental Coordination Local sat under consideration of the following bills of the House. This instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. House Bill 942 do pass. House Bill 943 do pass. House Bill 965 do pass. House Bill 967 do pass. House Bill 976 do pass. House Bill 975 do pass. Respectfully submitted. Representative Jan Tankersley, the 160th District Chairman. Representative Corbett, the 174th District Chairman of the Committee on Motor Vehicles, has submitted the following report. The Speaker, your Committee on Motor Vehicles is under consideration the following bills of the House. It is instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. House Bill 870 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 463 do pass. House Bill 900 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Representative John Corbett of the 174th District, Chairman. Representative Hitchens of the 161st District, Chairman of the Committee on Public Safety and Homeland Security submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Public Safety and Homeland Security is under consideration the following bills of the House. It is instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. House Bill 859 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 838 do pass. House Bill 113 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 787 do pass by committee substitute. Respectfully submitted, Representative Bill Hitchens, the 161st District Chairman. That completes the reading of the reports of standing committees. We are we are about to go on to the local calendar. Third reading and passage of uncontested local bills. One bill on the local calendar relates to homestead exemption and requires a recorded two-thirds roll call vote for passage. If there is no objection, we will vote on the local calendar as a whole with a recorded vote. The clerk will read, hearing none, it is so ordered. The clerk will read the local calendar. House Bill 942 by Resident Dunahoo, the 30th City of Flowery Branch. House Bill 943 by Resident of Dunahoo, the 30th City of Oakwood. House Bill 965 by Resident of Baysmore, the 63rd City of South Fulton. House Bill 967 by Resident of Smith, the 133rd. Columbus, Muskogee County, House Bill 976 by Representative Tankersley, the 160th, Bullock County, House Bill 975 by Representative McCall, the 33rd, Madison County. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered on the local calendar? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection? to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bills. The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall these bills now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bills on the local calendar will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines on the passage of the bills on the local calendar. The ayes are 157. The nays are zero. These bills having received the requisite constitutional majority are therefore passed. For what purpose does Representative Vance Smith, rise. Make a motion. Mr. State Mr. your motion. I'd like to move that House Bill 967 be immediately transmitted to the Senate. Clerk will read the caption. 
House Bill 967 by Resident Smith and 133rd and others to be entitled to an act to amend an act establishing the Municipal Court of Columbus, Georgia. Representative Smith has moved that House Bill 967, which was just passed by this body, be immediately transmitted to the Senate. Is there objection? Is there objection? The chair hears none, and it is so ordered, and it is on its way. We are now going on to morning orders. The chair is going to ask all members to please remain in their seats and give respect to the members in the well on morning orders. Before we start morning orders, the chair wants to recognize on the floor of the house a former member of this body, a former member of the state senate, and now the United States representative from Southeast Georgia, Representative Buddy Carter. <laughs> Be sure and visit with Representative Carter while he's here. All right, we... Uh, We have a lot of members that signed up for morning orders, and we have, I think, six or seven invite resolutions. So the chair is going to limit members to one minute each on morning orders, and we're probably not going to get to everybody today. I'll just warn you in advance. Chair recognizes for a morning order Representatives Gaines and Weedauer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This morning, we rise to celebrate a great day at the University of Georgia. Uh, as the University of Georgia's name in the Col College of Education after Mary Frances Early, the first African-American graduate of the University of Georgia, graduating in 1962. We just look forward to getting over to Athens this afternoon to witness this dedication. This is just a, not only a great day for the University of Georgia, but a great day in the state of Georgia. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes for a morning order, Representative Carpenter. Thank you, Speaker. Sorry about the wait. Uh, everybody from uh, Dalton Whitfield Leadership uh, Whitfield, if you'll stand up, we appreciate you being here today. It's a great group of folks run by uh, the Dalton Chamber. Uh, we appreciate you being here today. Thank you very much. Chair recognizes Rep uh, Chairman Benton for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the House. Uh, this year marks the 70th anniversary of the Employee Retirement System of Georgia. Uh, it is made up of uh, 72,000 retirees, 108,000 active members, and to look after all these, we have 100 employees at the agency that serves this population. We have members of that uh, of the Employee Retirement System here with us today in the gallery. If they would stand and we could welcome them. They're over here in the gallery over here. If we could welcome them to the house. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes representatives Kirby and Gaines and Chairman England for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, February, as you don't know it, is American Heart Month. Cardiac disease is a, a major cause of death in uh, both the United States and Georgia, but it doesn't have to be fatal. 
Today we have some real heroes with us. The emergency services are committed to professional and excellence and on behalf of, of all of them in Georgia, we have some members of the emergency services from Barrow County with us. Would you all please stand with us in the gallery, those with the EMS with Barrow County. <laughs> now to make this a little more personal, we also have a survivor. On December 2nd, 2019, Mr. Eric Schwebel suffered a sudden cardiac arrest in his home. And the Barrow County EMS responded to that. Mr. Schwebel is here and joined with us by his family. Would Eric Schwebel and your family please stand? Thank you. And Sydney, would you still remain standing, please? There's a little more to this story. Many of us have been trained in CPR, over, but we haven't had a chance to really practice those skills or use them. We're hopefully prepared. But heroes do come in any size and shape, and they come when they're needed. And on December 2nd, Sydney was there. A 17-year-old high school student performed CPR on her father until the EMTs arrived. Please help me in recognizing Sydney for her heroic action and for her saving her father's life. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield. Chair recognizes the whip of the Majority Caucus, Representative Kelly, for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the House. I know in each of our districts we have civic organizations that give back so much to our community, and I'm proud to have the Rotary Club of Polk County of Rockmart here with us, along with our mayor of Rockmart, Sherman Ross. If all y'all would stand for us and let us recognize you here in the House. Thank y'all for being with us. Chair recognizes Representative Earhart for a morning order. Good morning. Today I stand before you to honor Katherine Jackson, a mathematician, a NASA scientist who played a critical role in the Apollo 11 moon landing and was one of the inspirations for the 2016 award-winning film, Hidden Figures. She passed away on Monday at age 101. Johnson was instrumental in calculating the trajectories that would allow the Apollo 11 spacecraft to land on the moon. NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine said, Johnson helped our nation enlarge the frontiers of space, even as she made huge strides that also opened doors for women, and people of color. She was an American hero, and her pioneering legacy will never be forgotten. In her 33 years at NASA, Johnson helped our nation explore the final frontier of space. 
Thank you, Katherine Johnson, for breaking barriers. You will never be remembered. You will forever be remembered as an American hero. Please join me for a moment of silence. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Lopez Romero for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to recognize if we have the Girl Scouts present in the gallery to please rise. We are not only enjoying their cookies today, but I do want to recognize the great work that Girl Scouts does to empower young ladies. Today they are here as part of their program to unleash girl, go-getter, innovator, risk-taker, and leader, where they work from everything from having camping skills to lobbying here in the state capitol and their city councils and obviously making sure that they know how to run a tough business and make a lot of profit for the state of Georgia. So welcome to the Georgia, um, Georgia General Assembly and please make sure that you buy additional cookies beyond the ones that you have on your desks. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Silcox for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to recognize February 25th as Junior League, Junior League of Atlanta Day at the Capitol. For over 100 years, the Junior League has been committed to promoting volunteerism, developing the potential of women, and improving our community through effective action and leadership of trained volunteers. The League was pivotal in Atlanta in advocating for the safe harbor for sexually exploited children, creating the Atlanta Speech School, creating the Atlanta Children's Shelter, Chris Kids, and numerous other organizations that strengthen our community. Please join me in welcoming them in the gallery to the People's House, the Junior League of Atlanta. Chair recognizes Representatives Bennett, Davis, and Belton for a morning order. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today we recognize the Physical Therapy Association of Georgia for Physical Therapy Day at the Capitol. We have brought over 500 members of our organization here to visit us under the Gold Dome. The Physical Therapy Association of Georgia has over 2,900 members right here in Georgia. So today we'd like to ask our physical therapists if they are still with us, if they would please stand in the, in the balcony and be recognized. Thank you so much. Chair recognizes Chairman Corbett, Chairman Hatchett, and Chairman Stevens for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. February 11th was Dyslexia Day at the Capitol. Due to uh, scheduling conflict, we had to reschedule for today. Over three million uh, Americans are diagnosed with dyslexia every year. Dyslexia affects your ability to read, spell, write, and speak. Kids who have it are often smart, hardworking. In fact, many famous people have dyslexia. Steven Spielberg, Cher, Tom Cruise, Tim Tebow, Alexander Graham Bell, Henry Ford, Albert Einstein's, and, and many, many more. An individual with dyslexia may have a weakness in decoding and reading fluency, but they often are surrounded by a sea of strengths in reasoning, problem solving, concept formation, and critical thinking. But early detection is key. Uh, thanks to Chairman Jaspers last year, we passed a bill that helps with early detection. And I, we have a group, I don't know if they're still in, in the gallery or not, uh, decoding dyslexia. If you're still here, would you rise? If not, they had to go across the aisle. Let's give them a hand, thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Jasmine Clark for a morning order. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today's moment in black history, I want to acknowledge some recent history that was made in Gwinnett County. Gwinnett County was created in 1818. For a century and a half, the, the county's access to education was segregated along racial lines. It was not until the late 1960s that Gwinnett County schools were integrated. It would take 50 more years for the county to have an African American to serve on the county school board. As we celebrated our county's 200 year birthday in 2018, we also celebrated history as Everton Blair was elected to the school board. Everton Blair is a product of Gwinnett County Schools, graduating from Shiloh High School and going on to attend Harvard and then Stanford. He has dedicated his heart to improving education as a teacher and also working with President Obama on education policy and more. Mr. Blair is here with us in the gallery. Could you please stand? Join me in recognizing this trailblazer and history maker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative Rick Williams for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Trey Rose and I would like to recognize Putnam County leadership. If y'all would still please stand for us so we can recognize you. If y'all would give them a hand. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative Nelson for a morning order. Good morning, thank you, Mr. Speaker. On behalf of our family of the late Kobe and Gigi Bryant, Kobe has many ties in the Georgia area, Augusta, Lincolnton, Hartwell, and Decatur. And we send our heartfelt thanks to all acts of kindness that have been shown to us recently throughout the tragedy. And we ask that you keep all of the families of all of the victims in your prayers in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Chair recognizes Representative Dickerson, Representative Burnow, Representative Scott for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today we would like to recognize the National Coalition of Negro Women, an organization that has been around for years. If they're in the gallery, would you please stand and let us acknowledge you? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We are all members of that organization as well. Chair recognizes Representative Schofield for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, good morning, everyone. Today we have some very special guests in the gallery today. These are members from far the city of Forest Park. These are members that are keep our city moving forward. We have the mayor, we have council members, and we have residents of Forest Park. If you would just stand and acknowledge the great city of Forest Park in the building today. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Kausha for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, today I'm going to ask you to imagine something. I want you to imagine being pregnant or imagine that your wife or your sister is pregnant or your daughter. <laughs> Let's say in the second trimester, you live in rural Georgia and the nearest doctor is about two hours away. You have no car, you have three children, and there are other health issues weighing on you, diabetes or high blood, high blood pressure. You cannot afford health insurance 
And you know the pregnancy is risky, but going to see a doctor seems like an insurmountable obstacle, just another hurdle in your already busy and complicated life. So what can you do? You feel helpless and you feel alone. That is the grim reality for many mothers in rural Georgia, and especially for black women, who are three or four times more likely than white women to suffer complications during childbirth. When taking care of yourself becomes just another burden, the risk of something going wrong increases. We can do better. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative Mary Frances Williams for a morning order. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, you all have information on your desk. This is actually um, after school day at the Capitol. And there are folks in the, uh, that will be in the South um, lobby until noon today with, with uh, examples of different programs. After school is a safe space with healthy snacks and physical activity, and it helps working families. And some of the organizations that participate and help run after-school programs are 4-H, Boys and Girls Clubs, and um, Boys and Girls Clubs, and the YMCAs. So thank you very much, um, and I hope you will talk to some of the folks here. I don't know if there's anybody from the after-school network in the lobby, I mean, in the gallery this morning. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Hutchinson, you have 10 seconds left. <laughs> Chair recognizes Representative Hutchinson. Good morning, speakers. I mean, good morning, colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> and happy Mardi Gras from my home city of New Orleans. This morning, I want to introduce you to Lewis. Lewis is 12 years old. He's a sweet boy who gets along well with other kids at school. He loves his teachers, earns good grades, and enjoys learning new things. When not at school, Lewis enjoys spending time with loved ones, swimming and horseback riding. Lewis enjoys playing football, basketball, and video games and watching action movies. He looks forward to having a forever home very soon and playing in the NFL when he grows up. Ladies and gentlemen, Lewis. Thank you, and I yield the wealth. Okay, we got through morning orders. Chair recognizes Representative Holland to introduce the doctor of the day. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, it's my honor to introduce Dr. Devan, our doctor of the day. Dr. Devan received his medical degree from Georgetown University. He completed his residency in anesthesiology at New York Medical College and his pain management fellowship at Northwestern University in Chicago. He is the chief of pain management for the Southeast Permanente Medical Group. He is board certified in anesthesiology and pain management and specializes in treating debilitating pain conditions such as sciatica, spinal stenosis, and cancer pain. We are very lucky to have him with us today. Please welcome Dr. Devan. Thank you, Representative Holland, Mr. Speaker, representatives, and distinguished guests. It's an honor to be a part of this great tradition and serve as Doctor of the Day today. It's also a privilege to serve the people of Georgia as a member of the Southeast Permanente Medical Group. We are over 800 providers, and we serve over 300,000 individuals in Metro Atlanta and Athens. That number includes almost 40,000 State of Georgia employees and their dependents, and we're also honored to care for almost 2,000 retired military service members and their families through our TRICARE program. Thank you again for welcoming me today, and thank you for prioritizing the health care of all Georgians. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Get a picture. Yeah. We are now going to recognize and honor some um, very special Georgians. Chair is going to start with a resolution because there's a guy in a letterman's jacket sitting down there that looks like he could flatten me, <laughs> and he's intimidating me. So I'm going to get him out of here. <laughs> 
Clerk will read the caption to House Resolution 1063. House Resolution 1063 by Representative Hatchet of the 150th, a resolution congratulating the Dublin Fighting Irish for winning the 2019-2020 GHSA Class AA State Football Championship and for other purposes. Chair recognizes Chairman Hatchett for an invite resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is a special day for Dublin Lawrence County. I've been up here 10 years, and this is my first and second invite resolution during a normal session, so it's special. To, to go along with that, we've got two mighty proud leaders of our school system here. Dr. Fred Williams is the superintendent, and the principal of the Dublin High School is D Dr. Jeroy Stuckey, who got started on his great path by his first grade teacher in 1994, who happened to be my wife. I'm going to give you some stats about this AA championship football team. They rushed for 6,184 yards, the 10th most all-time nationally. They rushed for 413 yards per game, 12th all-time nationally. They rushed for 758 yards in one game in a 77-48 to 48 win over Suwannee of Florida the eighth most single game rushing yards in America. Dublin's ability to run the ball helped them to score a team best 693 points, good for the eighth most in Georgia high school football history, including scoring 70 points in a game, not once, not twice, but three times. Being a being a former tree knocker for the Irish, that's me, it was all because of the offensive line. And there was a three-headed monster in the backfield. That three-headed monster composed of Marcus Adams, who rushed for 1,448 yards and 14 TDs. But that was a great, that was an impressive total, but it was bested not once, but twice, by Zion Kemp, who rushed for 1,519 yards and 20 TDs. And next, by fullback Jaquez Evans, who rushed for an unreal 2,531 yards and 40 TDs, and he missed two games. Coach Holmes has said what made this team special is that they weren't worried about the most talented. They kept their focus and were, their willingness to battle for each other was unmatched. They knew who they were and they weren't afraid to be who they were. All this was done by being the football equivalent to Shakespeare, to thine own self be true. Run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. <laughs> Team, our, our community couldn't be more excited at how they represented themselves and represented Dublin and Lawrence County. It gives me great pride as a Dublin High School alum to know that the Irish are champions once again. Coach Holmes, you'd like to say a word? I'd just like to say thank you and all the rest of our players up there. Please stand up for just a second. Thank you. Here you go, Holmes.
Chair recognizes Chairman, or I'm sorry, Clerk will read the caption to House Resolution 1132. House Resolution 1132 by Representative Hatchet to the 150th, a resolution recognizing and commending Pearl Whitlock on the grand occasion of her 50th anniversary as an educator and for other purposes. Chair recognizes Chairman Hatchet for an invite resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, this resolution is even better than the last because it's what we're all here for every year to fight for our educators. It's my honor to recognize Mary Pearl Whitlock. She started her teaching career in 1970. She was a bright-eyed 22-year-old, fresh out of Georgia College, when she accepted that teaching position at Dublin High, which also coincided with the integration of Dublin City Schools. As she used to say, bedlam ensued which could have sent many young teachers running from education to the private sector, but not Miss Pearl. Her mix of tough love and genuine concern for students, social emotional growth, something only now becoming a major part of education con conversations, made her a quick favorite among students from all walks of life. It also made her a perfect fit as a coach she took the tennis team and basketball courts to help the Lady Irish during those early years. And all Miss Pearl coached tennis for 29 years, earning the most wins in Georgia history, including multiple Final Four appearances and grooming stars that went on to stellar college and professional careers. Compliments are a commonplace for a woman who still enjoys working a gate at a ball game, and rarely forgets the name of students she taught when she runs into them at the store or at Huddle House. As the years pass, Ms. Pearl has watched as former students return to join her as parents of current students or as colleagues, growing her figuratively family exponentially in the process. This year marks Ms. Pearl's 50th year in education an unbelievable accomplishment, not simply, I'm a proud former student of Miss Pearl's, and I'm one of her sons. She hugs my neck every time I see her and she talks to me like we've never skipped a beat. She's a legend not because of what she's done for our community, but for the love she's shown so many and the hope she has provided ever since those first days at Dublin High that our community can and should be a better place. It's an honor to bring her before you today. Thank you, Ms. Pearl. I love you. We love you. And here's hoping our schools continue to have educators like you mm -hmm. teaching our children how to be the best people they can be in the classroom and in life. Thank you. He said I was limited in time, but it's difficult to limit a teacher who's been speaking for 50 years. But he is my former student, and I cannot share some of the things, of course, we experienced, because it might be a little embarrassing. These are my students also, and my boss is my former student at the high school. And these young people are my family and my former students. And I love Dublin City Schools, and go green and go, and go Irish pride. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, when I found out Miss Pearl was coming, I called her and she has brought your transcripts from high school with her today. I'm going to ask them to put them up on the board. 
they will prove that this can only happen in America. The clerk will read the caption to House Resolution 1182. House Resolution 1182 by President Bentley, the 139th Smyrie, 135th. Stovall, the 74th, Trammell, the 132nd, and Prince, the 127th. A resolution recognizing February 25th, 2020 as Fort Valley State University Day at the State Capitol in recognition of the university's 125th anniversary and for other purposes. Before I introduce uh, Representative Bentley, I just want to say to the our friends from Fort Valley State that over the last few days we have all been Wildcats, every Georgian. Chair recognizes Representative Patty Bentley for an invite resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good morning, colleagues. It is Fort Valley State University Day at the State Capitol, and I am so excited that we have this blue and gold here today, and on your desk is the goat milk soap, wonderful soap that's been delivered to you by Fort Valley State University's College of Agriculture. And to all of my single colleagues, this goat milk soap will certainly ensure that you have a great weekend. So thank you so very much. And I'm so glad to have our chair of the foundation board here. And we're so happy to have students up in the gallery if they are please stand and colleagues, if you acknowledge them and our mayor of the city of Fort Valley. The city of Fort Valley, thank you all. Thank you. Now we're going to yield to our chair of the Fort Valley State University Foundation Board, none other than our very own Dean Smiley. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker and members of the House. Uh, There's very few things that mean uh, as much to me as, as family and, and my love for the Lord is Fort Valley State University. Uh, Fort Valley, um, uh, changed my life and uh, uh, gave me an opportunity to uh, attend the university and uh, and I am so proud of the university. In fact, uh, this 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 uh, week, you all, uh, as the speaker said, um, uh, put our arms around the Fort Valley State University in, in the death of one of our students. And I want to thank our president. Uh, Dr. Paul Jones and his entire administration and all of those that um, that assisted um, in that time and we appreciate your prayers and uh, it's a great day and uh, this is the day that the Lord has made we ought to rejoice and be glad in it but we want to thank our president we want to thank the university of being here and would y'all please warmly welcome the president of the Fort Valley State University Dr. Paul Jones Dr. Jones Thank you, Representative Smyrie. Thank you, Speaker. It truly is an honor to join you here today. And let me also just thank you for your prayers and, and all of your kind words over this past week, as it has been a very challenging time for our institution. But we're also proud that we, are, we have a wonderful family, a family of Wildcats who continue to lift each other up, and do amazing things. I want to quickly just introduce my team here. I have the Provost Ramon Stewart here, Mr. and Ms. FBSU, Takiri Moore, and Ryan Thurman, our Student Government President, Jalen Day. Let's all welcome them here today. 
If I can just say, we are celebrating our 125th year this year, 125 years of serving Georgia, of transforming lives of students all throughout America. We're proud of the work that we're doing in the STEM fields. We're proud of the work that we're doing in agriculture. And more importantly, we thank you for allowing us to do this work every year. Thank you very much. Go Wildcats. Clerk will read the caption to House Resolution 1056. House Resolution 1056 by Representative Dickey, the 140th, next to the 69th, England, the 116th, Glanton, and the 75th, Silcox, the 52nd, and others. A resolution recognizing February 25th, 2020, as the Georgia Life Sciences Day at the State Capitol and commending Georgia Bio and for other purposes. Chair recognizes Chairman Dickey for an invite resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'm proud today uh, is, is uh, Georgia Bio Day. Um, Georgia Bio was founded in 1989, a nonprofit membership-based organization that promotes the interest and growth of the life sciences industry. Members include companies, universities, research institutions, government groups, and industry associations involved in the discovery and application of life sciences. Its, um, its many industry sectors include biotechnology, medical devices, biopharmaceuticals, health, digital health, and research institutions, global health, bioagriculture, and biofood. Thanks to the you, the Georgia General Assembly last year, we funded the Rural Teacher Training Initiative and uh, delivered some cutting edge training and equipment for our, for our teachers. Uh, and they just had their training here uh, last month. Uh, it was a great success. 72 high school teachers participated, 20 through 23 rural districts, uh, and impacted 11,500 students, hopefully, in our rural communities. We're trying to connect the uh, teaching to, uh, to our industry, something that many of y'all have uh, uh, asked to do. And so to, today on, on the podium, I have Maria Thacker, Kristen Boskin, and Phil Gibson with Georgia Bio. And, and uh, uh, Maria is president and CEO of Georgia Bio. I wanted her to come greet y'all. Thank you. Thank you, sir, and, and thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, like he said, my name is Maria Thacker, and I'm president and CEO of Georgia Bio. And first and foremost, I'd like to thank this body for their support of our rural teacher training program, um, and especially Representatives Dickey, Nix, and um, England. Uh, your leadership has been crucial to this, and the fact that we were able to impact nearly 12,000 young minds across rural Georgia to expose them to everything in the medical career, to the agriculture and innovation areas and bio-industrial areas is really saying a lot about the, the, the forward-looking of this body. So thank you for that, and we're proud to um, uh, drive forward, continue, uh, continue to work towards um, doing this program again and impacting more young minds and exposing them to 21st century careers, additionally bringing crucial 21st century technology into classrooms across rural Georgia. Additionally, today is Life Sciences Day at the Capitol, and we have companies from um, across our community uh, that are, are here to talk to you today about the innovations and cures and treatments they want to bring to patients, not only here in Georgia, but across the world. I think that is a lot more relevant 
relevant, especially today with COVID-19 spreading across the planet in this epidemic. Um, much of the innovations are coming out of places like CDC, but also small companies in our membership like Geovax and over at Drive at Emory University. We will continue to um, want to uh, promote the life sciences and invest in cures and treatments for patients and the innovations and research necessary to make those things happen to keep people healthy and happy. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Speaker. Clerk will read the caption to House Resolution 916. House Resolution 916 by Representatives Anulowitz the 42nd, Allen the 40th, Wilkerson the 38th, Thomas the 39th, Jones the 53rd, and others. A resolution recognizing and commending Max Bacon and for other purposes. Chair recognizes Representative Anulowitz for an invite resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is my honor today to introduce to this house my friend and immediate past mayor of Smyrna, Max Bacon. If you don't know Max, Max is who people are talking about when they say his reputation precedes him. In fact, I suggested to the speaker that he might want to consider adding a two-second delay button for Max's remarks that we're about to have. Max is a lifelong Smyrna resident. He was born to Arthur and Dorothy Bacon in 1948. He graduated from Campbell High School, go Spartans, in 1966 and joined the Georgia Air National Guard where he served his country until 1970. Following his time serving our country, he joined the United States Postal Service where after a 40-year career, he retired as Postmaster General for the Smyrna Post Office. Max is a beloved father, brother, and friend. He's joined here today by his two sisters, Linda Keeney and Jenny Ruth Williams, his brother-in-law, Dale Williams, and his dear friend, Mike Satterfield. Most notably, Max Bacon served the city of Smyrna for 40 years. First on the city council when his father was mayor from 1979 to 1985, he represented Ward 2. And then following his father's death, Max was elected mayor of Smyrna where he served until 2019 when he retired this past fall. Max Vision led the city of Smyrna through a period of unprecedented growth. His vision and bold leadership led the revitalization of downtown Smyrna, which in turn inspired the revitalization of downtowns throughout Georgia and Metro Atlanta. No one loves Smyrna as much as Max Bacon, and I am proud to recognize him here today and share him with you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Terry, for doing this. I get way too much credit for the renovation and the redevelopment of Smyrna. Uh, Terry was on the council for six years before she came this way. I'm sure, I think Derek Norton, Mayor Norton, is somewhere out there, um, and also Travis Lindley, who's on the city council. Um, I didn't. Um, yeah, they're over here to the right. Y'all stay over there. Um, Austin's there too. Austin, Austin. I'm sorry. Good forum. Yeah, uh, but anyway, thank you so much, and I'm not going to speak long. I just say, again, I get too much credit. I mean, I maybe 98% is um, what I did. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> 98, 95, 98, yeah, right around there. But thank you very much.
I'm going to ask the clerk to read the caption of both House Resolution 1101 and House Resolution 1102. House Resolution 1101 by Representative Mathis of the 144th Resolution congratulating the Bleckley County High School's girls tennis team for winning the 2019 Class AA State Tennis Championship. House Resolution 1102 by Representative Mathis of the 144th a Resolution congratulating the Bleckley County High School's girls cross country team for winning the 2019 Class AA State Cross Country Championship and for other purposes. Chair recognizes Representative Danny Mathis for an invite resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, House of Representatives. Thank you, folks in the gallery. You saved the best for last. <clears throat> we have the Blackley County Royal Cross Country Team won the 2019 state championship, this being the fourth year in a row. We are so glad for that. We have Coach Shelley Cranford here. We have Tristan Crosby and Austin Perez with him today. We're so glad that they're here. Coach Cramper. Mr. Speaker and House of Representatives, Representative Mathis, thank you all so much. This is our fourth year being here. And as I said last year, coming here never gets old. Winning never gets old. But we are most appreciative for having us here today and recognizing our team. And the rest of our girls team is up there in the balcony. But just want to thank you all so much. If you would stand, girls that are in the balcony cross country. Our four time state champions in girls cross country. Thank y'all. Thank you, Coach Cranford. We are proud to have Coach Brad Sanders here. We are recognizing the tennis team, Bleckley County Tennis Team 2019 Championship. This is their third year in a row. They're from my hometown of Cochran. This time we were asked Coach Brad Sanders to step to the podium. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Mathis. I'd like for my girls to stand, the ones in the balcony. Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank all the representatives here. As a 29-year educator, I would really like to thank the Georgia House of Rep Representatives for your support of education. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay. It is 1140, and we are now going on to the rules calendar. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 819. House Bill 819 by Representative Parker, 101st, Hitchens, 161st, Williams, 168th, to be entitled an act to amend Article 2, Chapter 5 of Title 40, the official code of Georgia Annotator, relating the issuance, expiration, and renewal of licenses. This bill had been referred to the Committee on Motor Vehicles. That committee recommends that this bill do pass. Chair recognizes the Chairman of the Public Safety and Homeland Security Committee, Chairman Hitchens to present the bill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, today I'm honored to rise for House Bill 819, a bill to me that is simply about honor and respect. What this bill does is to recognize military veterans who served during a time of conflict as recognized by the United States government. But this bill has a unique twist as it honors military personnel of another country who fought with us as an ally. And as an additional requirement, it is that they have immigrated to the United States and have become naturalized United States and Georgia citizens. The recognition would be in the form of being eligible for a Georgia veterans license. 
If an applicant meets the military and citizenship requirements, he or she must produce an equivalent document to our DD-214, which is a certificate issued to all military personnel when they leave the service after at least 180 days of active duty. It basically documents their service history. They must then take this document to a Department of Veterans Affairs office where the document will be verified and a certificate of eligibility will be issued. Then the applicant takes that certificate to the Department of Driver Service Office where they will be issued a Georgia Veterans License. Seated in the balcony today are members of the Georgia chapter of the Korean American Vietnam Veterans Association. They were the impetus for this legislation being brought forward. As many of you here are aware, Representative Al Williams served in the Army in Vietnam and 54 years ago, I served for 13 months there in the Marines. It was a dirty, nasty, divisive war that took the lives of over 58,000 American military personnel. And we still have over 1,000 who are missing in action and unaccounted for. And it left an indelible mark in everybody who participated there. While many here today are too young to remember the war, those who are old enough probably are unaware of a lot of the facts. One of which is that we had five countries that fought with us as allies. Australia, New Zealand, the Philippines, Thailand, and the Republic of Korea. By far the largest contingent of allied personnel came from the Republic of Korea. They sent a half a million personnel to Vietnam in a well-disciplined and trained army who were recognized, particularly by the enemy, as a formidable opponent. They had approximately 11,000 personnel received the equivalent of a Purple Heart, and over 5,000 of their personnel were killed in action. As noted earlier, this bill covers personnel from all allied countries that participated in a recognized time of military conflict. But if many of us are aware, we have a significant Korean-American population in Georgia. They are hardworking, industrious people who have contributed significantly to our society and our economy. But many of them still hold some of their Korean values, one of which is to honor and respect those who serve in the military, and in particular during a time of war. Recognition of that brings honor not only to the individual, but also to their family. So I'm asking you today that you honor these soldiers who stood fast for our country, which is now their country, so they can have the honor and respect they so rightly deserve. In conclusion, this reminds me of Shakespeare's immortal words in King Henry V, Act 4, Scene 3, as the English army was preparing for the Battle of Aquincourt in France, where they were greatly outnumbered. King Henry spoke to his men in an effort to try and stiffen their resolve as they went into battle. He said, and I paraphrase, he who sheds his blood with me today will be my brother. And from this day forth will be a gentleman. For we few, we happy few, are truly a band of brothers. These gentlemen in the balcony truly are our brothers, and I hope you will support them today in this endeavor. And I will gladly stand for any questions. Do you yield for questions? I yield. Chair recognizes Representative Rogers to your right for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will the gentleman yield? I yield. Is it not true that this is really just the next logical step that the Georgia Department of Defense has already recognized these folks and this is just one more way to add to the honor? That, that's true. And is it also not true that this is probably one of the best investments the state could ever make? There's and about 60 people, average cost of $15 for a driver's license, you're talking about less than $1,000 to restore honor and, and pride to this group of people? And that's correct, and like me, most of them are 70 plus years of age. Yes, sir, and is it also not finally true that many of these folks have children and grandchildren that are now proudly wearing the uniform of this country? I was amazed in the committee here when they spoke that a great number of them have, uh, have children and grandchildren in the Armed Forces of the United States, and many of them are commissioned officers. It's a great bill. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you all.
Mr. Chairman, I think in legislative parlance, that's what is known as a friendly question. <laughs> I've had enough of the other in the past. I, I, I know you have. You have no further questions. Thank you. I yield the will. All right. We have members who wish to speak. Uh, I'm going to hear. We're going to hear from those members, and then we have a member that wants to speak on an amendment. The chair recognizes Representative Al Williams to speak to the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Chairman Hitchens, for a very moving presentation of this well-deserved recognition and honor. And to my brothers from South Korea, Anna Shamika, we're blessed to finally come to this point. I came home in October of 1968 there were no parades, there were no honors. Everybody wanted to forget about that war. But some of the hardest fighting and most disciplined soldiers in Vietnam were the soldiers of the South, v South Korean Army. Their courage is legendary. As a matter of fact, members of the North Vietnamese Army and members of the Viet Cong, many times when they were about to be captured, they would run to be captured by the Americans because they did not want to be captured by the Koreans. Justice was quick and swift and exact. This is a great bill. It's a wonderful bill. 58,000 Americans, 5,000 Koreans died. With the real numbers, number over 100,000, and people are still dying from that war. We're glad to honor our brothers from, from Korea, and we look forward to seeing these license plates on the roads in Georgia. Congratulations. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Chair recognizes Representative Park to speak to the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to support House Bill 819 and encourage each of you to vote yes. As Chairman Hitchens mentioned, House Bill 819 would allow U.S. citizens who fought alongside American armed forces as an ally during war or any conflict and who were honorably discharged to receive a veteran's license. I support this bill because it recognizes and commends the service and sacrifice of our allies who put their lives on the line fighting for democracy, freedom, and peace around the world. I also believe this bill will help foster greater cooperation and strengthen relationships with key allies throughout the world. During the Korean War, the United States sent 326,000 troops to fight alongside Korean soldiers to preserve the newly formed South Korean democracy after communist North Korea invaded on June 25, 1950. According to the U.S. Department of Defense, more than 36,000 Americans sacrificed their lives, and more than 103,000 Americans were wounded in action. About a decade later, during the Vietnam War, as Chairman Hitchens mentioned, South Korea sent more than half a million troops to Vietnam, second only to the U.S. Many South Korean soldiers who went saw themselves as repaying the sacrifices made by American forces during the Korean War, which allowed South Korea to be free and become the vibrant democracy it is today. So I hope each of you will vote yes to recognize the honor and sacrifice of our veteran allies. And I'd be happy to take any questions, and if there are none, I ask for your favorable consideration, and I yield the will. No questions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative Wynn to speak to the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
So you all know we're having a very strange session when I'm here uh, speaking in, in favor of a bill carried by a member on the other side of the aisle, right? <laughs> but today I am here to support this bill to recognize U.S. citizens who fought alongside American armed forces as allies during times of war and conflict. For me, this bill is personal because it's part of my family's history and my family's history has been cobbled together by stories told to me by members of my family. But as many of us know, when it comes to our family histories, they're often incomplete, especially when marked by trauma. It was nearly 65 years ago when the Vietnam War began, a war that lasted 19 years and took the lives of so many people, it's hard to estimate whether there were a million deaths or closer to four million casualties. These deaths include military deaths, civilian deaths, and our allied military deaths. And for those who did not die in conflict, the impact of this brutal war left a devastating stain on the lives of hundreds of thousands of young men who were drafted or enlisted to serve. I know that this has been true for the members in my own family, and I know this has been true for the Vietnam veterans I have met throughout my life. So today, I want to take a moment to honor some of these men. These men include my own father, who served as a lieutenant in the medical army and was later held as a prisoner of war for three years. These men include the number of black veterans in my district who enlisted or were drafted at a time when we were just integrating armed forces for the first time. These men include members of this body who served in Vietnam when they were young men, and I like to say many, 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 many years ago. My friends, Representative Al Williams, who was only 19 at the time, and my friend, Colonel Bill Hitchens. Representative Williams claims that Colonel was 35 when he was in Vietnam, but I don't think those numbers are true. <laughs> Um, and finally, the reason why we are here today is because of our allied forces in the well. This bill gives recognition to these allied forces, our Korean, American, Vietnam veterans, who deserve to be honored for their bravery and for their sacrifice. These men have made their homes in Gwinnett County and are an important part of our community, and they are U.S. citizens just like us. I think it's fair to say that without the courage demonstrated by these men, it is probable that I would not be here today. So I ask for your favorable consideration of House Bill 819, but I also want to take this moment to personally thank each and every one of you for your service. Thank you. It looks like all the members who wish to be heard on the bill is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. There is an amendment. It is AM 500002, and it is offered up by Representative Bonner and Chairman Hitchens. Clerk will read the amendment. Amendment HB 819. LC 392465 by replacing lines 27 through 30 with the following. Veterans who are residents of Georgia at the time of the application for the license and who served on active duty in the armed forces of the United States or are on active. By replacing lines 40 and 41 with the following. Application for the license who served on active duty. Chair recognizes Representative Bonner to speak to the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, first of all, as a 23-year uh, Army veteran, uh, I would like to say thank you to my brothers in arms. Uh, and for those of you that, that did serve in Vietnam, I would say to you, welcome home. Um, I am here this morning to offer a friendly amendment to the bill. Um, this simply eliminates the two-year residency requirement for veterans in order to receive that license. It simply states that when they, uh, if they are a resident of Georgia, uh, at the time that they apply for that license, they can get it and will not have to wait for that two-year period. So I would ask for your favorable consideration in supporting the amendment, which we believe makes this bill uh, even more special. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At this time, I'll answer any questions. You have no questions. Thank you. I yield the will. Is there any objection to adopting the Bonner Hitchens Amendment, AM 500002? Hearing none, the amendment is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill <coughs> now pass? All those in favor of the passage of House Bill 819 will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines on the passage of House Bill 819. The ayes are 162, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the clerk will read the caption to House Bill 779. House Bill 779 by Representative Blackman and the 146th and others to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 5C of Title 4080, the official code of Georgia annotated relating to alternative ad valorem taxes on motor vehicles. This bill had to refer to the committee on ways and means. That committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. Chair recognizes Chairman Blackman to present the bill. Tough to follow that. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Bring before you House Bill 779 as it relates to the title ad valorem tax. Back uh, July 1, based on uh, a good faith discussion and agreement we put some additional dollars into our local communities regarding our title ad valorem tax. And that local split was agreed upon by our local governments, uh, our cities, our counties, and our schools. And the intent was to see all those local governments benefit uh, from the additional dollars. Um, and as the uh, numbers started coming in, we saw that certain areas were up where our, our cities were down, our counties were up, and our schools were up. So again, in good faith, our, our cities, our counties, and our schools came back together and um, as we all realized might be the case and came up with a new split at that local level, it is captured in this bill. Um, the counties, uh, the, the cities and the schools, all their representation have signed off and endorsed this. It moves five uh, percentage points from the counties within the city footprint to the cities, and it moves six percentage points from the city schools within the city footprint to our cities. And again, this is an agreed upon measure. I really appreciate the fact that they were willing to sit down and, and address this in a good faith way. Uh, talked to many of you about it. I know you've gotten some calls, and I appreciate the opportunity that I've had to, to speak to so many superintendents and others out there uh, regarding this issue. Um, Mr. Speaker, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to try to address those. You have a question if you care to yield. Uh, yes, sir, I will yield. Chair recognizes the minority leader, Leader Trammell, to your left for a question. Will the gentleman yield? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, isn't it true that you have two tax bills on today's rules calendar? Uh, yes, sir, that is correct. Will the gentleman further yield? Yes, sir. Uh, and isn't it true that this is not House Bill 715 <laughs> that people have had so much interest and wanted to talk to me about? Isn't that true? The gentleman knows of what he speaks. <laughs> Thank you. 
No further questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I will uh, yield the will and ask for favorable consideration. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of House Bill 779 will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines on the passage of House Bill 779. The ayes are 157, the nays are 1. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 664. House Bill 664 by Representative Fleming of the 121st and others to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 23 of Title 47, the official code of Georgia annotated relating to the Georgia judicial retirement system so as to require membership in the system for certain persons. This bill have referred to the Committee on Retirement. That committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. Chair recognizes the chair of the Judiciary Committee, Chairman Fleming, to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members of the House, I bring to you today House Bill 664. Uh, this is a bill which will affect our legislative council and their retirement system and hopefully enhance that system so we can better retain and hire those people who draw the bills up, not just for us in the Senate, but really for 11 or so million Georgians that we try to pass regularly here in the legislature. Uh, back uh, about 15 years ago, our members of legislative council were in what is referred to as the judicial retirement system. Because of some changes that took place back then, they were removed out of that system. And our head of legislative council will tell you it has been an impediment for him in hiring and recruiting ever since because that judicial retirement system is very good and it is one of the tools that we use to try to lure uh, attorneys out of private practice and more importantly retain them once they get here uh, to work uh, for us to draw up these very important legislative matters. Uh, this is a bipartisan bill. I want to thank the minority leader and the minority whip for signing on to the bill along with our late colleague Jay Powell and the ma majority whip Trey Kelly and others uh, Chairman Estration as well. Um, I think that it will be well served for us to pass this today. It has passed previously. This House has passed this bill before. It passed also in the Senate unanimously. Uh, the uh, Chairman of the Appropriations Committee in the Senate has agreed once again to handle this bill uh, if it goes back over there. Our Appropriations Chairman has agreed to help with making sure that the funds would be in the budget as necessary. So I would ask you to help us now pass this bill and have a good recruitment tool for the legislative council that assist us on a daily basis here at the Capitol by enhancing uh, their retirement system. Mr. Speaker, that is a summary of what you have before you. I would be happy to answer any additional questions that any members of the House may have. You have no questions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask for your favorable consideration. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of House Bill 664 
will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of House Bill 664. The ayes are 154, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Okay, I have good news. House Bill 715 will be postponed until the next legislative day. For what purpose does Chairman Corbett rise? State your motion. Chairman Corbett has moved that House Bill 846 be recommitted to the Rules Committee. The clerk will read the caption. House Bill 846 by Representative Corbett of the 174th and others be titled an act to amend Title 48 of the Fiscal Code of George Antetta relating to revenue and taxation so as to provide that interest paid on refunds of overpayment of taxes and past due taxes shall be equal to the bank prime rate. On the gentleman's motion at House Bill 846 be recommitted to the Rules Committee, is there objection? Is there objection? The chair hears none, and it is so ordered. What purpose does... Representative Derek Jackson, rise. To make a motion. State your motion. I move that House Bill 1006 be moved from the Committee on Judiciary to the Committee of Intergovernment Coordination. Both chairmen are in agreement. Representative Jackson has moved that House Bill 1006 be moved from the Judiciary Committee to the Intergovernmental Coordination Committee. The clerk will read the caption. House Bill 1006 by Representative Jackson, the 64th and others be titled an act to provide for the selection of the Chief Judge of the Atlanta Judicial Circuit. On the gentleman's motion that House Bill 1006 be moved from the Judiciary Committee to the Intergovernmental Coordination Committee, is there objection? Is there objection? The chair hears none, and it is so ordered. Clerk will read the caption to a group of privileged resolutions. Recognizing and commending the state school superintendent's teacher advisory council. Commending 
Beauty Pool Baldwin, Georgia's first black school superintendent, commending and congratulating Elizabeth Carlock Harris, recognizing and commending Christine Snell, MLS, on her outstanding service as a library director for the Fayette County Public Library, commending and congratulating Anna Troutman, commending and com commending and congratulating Gordon Central High School's Performing Arts, recognizing February as American Heart Month. Recognizing March 4, 2020 is Georgia Hope Day at the State Capitol. And supporting economic, cultural, security, and educational cooperation with Hungary. And recognizing February 8, 2020 is Hungary Day at the State Capitol. Commending June Wood, and for other purposes, that completes the reading of the privilege resolution. Is there any objection to adopting the privilege resolutions? <laughs> the chair hears none, and the resolutions are adopted. If you have signed up for an announcement, please make your way to the front of the chamber. We're going to begin announcements here momentarily. Chair recognizes the chair of the majority caucus, Chairman Hatchett. Wait, whoa, wait, wait a minute, Mr. Chairman. Will this take as long as your introductions earlier? Are you going to bend to the will of the House here? <laughs> Chair recognizes Chairman Hatchett for an announcement. Won't take it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It won't take as long as the intro to the pastor of the day was today. Uh, thank you. The majority caucus will meet upon adjournment in room 403, and we do have lunch. Chair recognizes Chairman Dollar for an announcement. <clears throat> Chairman Parsons wanted me to relay that there will be a energy and telecommunications um, committee meeting today at 3 o'clock up in 403. Chair recognizes Representative Dickerson for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Women's Legislative Caucus will be meeting around 514 and lunch will be served. Thank you. Chair recognizes Chairman Barr for an announcement. Hey, y'all, it is Tuesday, so that means tomorrow is fellowship, 7 o'clock in the Governor's Conference Room, 107 in the basement. We have a special guest speaker that is coming, so join us to see who that is. Thank you. Chair recognizes Chairman Pruitt for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The um, State Planning and Community Affairs will be meeting We'll say 1.15, it's set up for one o'clock. We'll meet at 1.15 and I'll give you time to uh, have a quick lunch and take a nap. Thank you. <laughs> Chair recognizes Chairman Lumsden for an announcement. Insurance committee members, there will be no insurance committee meeting in the morning, thank you. Chair recognizes the chair of the House Rules Committee, Chairman Smith, for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we're going to have to talk to these people who want to send bills back to rules. Um, rules will meet tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Thank you.
That completes our announcements. The chair recognizes the majority leader of the House for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move that this House stand adjourned until 10 a.m. Wednesday, February the 26th, 2020. The majority leader has moved that this House be adjourned until Wednesday, February the 26th at 10 a.m. All those in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed will say no. The ayes clearly have it. This House will be adjourned until Wednesday at 10 a.m.